Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the ankle joint. To begin with, this picture represents the posterior view of the frontal section of the ankle of the right leg. The ankle joint as you can see right here is a synovial joint of hinge variety. The upper articular surface of the ankle joint is formed by the lower end of the tibia including the medial malleolus as you see right here, the lateral malleolus of the fibula as you see right here and the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament that is a ligament between the tibia and the fibula which cannot be seen in this diagram. The inferior articular surface of the ankle joint is formed by the articular areas on the upper, medial and lateral aspects of the talus bone. Structurally, the joint is very strong. The stability of the joint is ensured by the close interlocking of the articular surfaces, the strong collateral ligaments on the sides, the tendons that cross the joint, 4 in the front, 3 on the postromedial aspect and 2 on the postrolateral aspect. The depth of the superior articular surface is contributed by the downward projection of the medial and lateral malleoli and the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament that bridges the gap between the tibia and the fibula and behind the talus bone. The inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament cannot be seen in this diagram. Now, concising the important points we have the ankle joint is a synovial joint of the hinge variety. The articular surfaces. The upper articular surface is formed by the lower end of the tibia including the medial malleolus, the lateral malleolus of the fibula, the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament. The inferior articular surface is formed by the articular areas on the upper, medial and lateral aspects of the talus. Structurally, the joint is very strong. The stability of the joint is ensured by the close interlocking of the articular surfaces, the strong collateral ligaments on the sides, the tendons that cross the joint, 4 in front, 3 on the postromedial and 2 on the postrolateral side. The depth of the superior articular surface is contributed by the downward projection of the medial and lateral malleoli and the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament that bridges the gap between the tibia and fibula behind the talus. There are two factors that tend to displace the tibia and the fibula forwards over the talus bone. These are the forward pull of the ligaments and the pull of gravity when the heel is raised. The displacement is prevented by the following factors. The talus is wedge shaped being wider anteriorly as you can see right here. It is wider anteriorly. The posterior border of the lower end of the tibia is prolonged downwards and the presence of many ligaments including the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament. Now there are two factors that tend to displace the tibia and fibula forwards over the talus. These factors are the forward pull of the tendons, the pull of gravity when the heel is raised. The displacement is prevented by the following factors. The talus is wedge shaped being wider anteriorly. The posterior border of the lower end of the tibia is prolonged downwards. The presence of inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament, the tibiocalcanean, posterior tibiotalar, calcaneofibular and posterior talofibular ligaments pass backwards and resist forward movement of the tibia and fibula. Now moving on to the ligaments of the ankle joint. The joint is supported by the fibrous capsule, the deltoid or the medial ligament and a lateral ligament. Looking at the ligaments in detail, firstly we have the fibrous capsule. It surrounds the joint but it is weak anteriorly and posteriorly. It is attached all around the articular margins with two exceptions. Postro superiorly, it is attached to the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament. Andro inferiorly, it is attached to the dorsum of the neck of the talus. 
the anterior and posterior parts of the capsule are loose and thin to allow hinge movements. On each side, however, it is supported by collateral ligaments as you can see right here. Now, concising the important points under the fibrous capsule, it surrounds the joint but it is weak anteriorly and posteriorly. It is attached all around the articular margins with two exceptions. Posterior superiorly it is attached to the inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament. Antero inferiorly it is attached to the dorsum of the neck of the talus. The anterior and posterior parts of the capsule are loose and thin to allow hinge movements. On each side however it is supported by strong collateral ligaments. Moving on to the next ligament we have the deltoid or the medial ligament. This is a very strong triangular ligament present on the medial side of the ankle. The ligament is divided into a superficial and a deep part. Both parts have a common attachment above to the apex and margins of the medial malleolus as you can see right here. This is a medial view of the ankle joint and we have a detailed picture of the medial or the deltoid ligament. Now looking at the superficial part of the deltoid ligament, it consists of anterior fibers or tibionavicular ligament right here that is attached to the tuberosity of the navicular bone. This is the navicular bone as you see right here. So the tibionavicular is attached to the tuberosity of the navicular bone and to the medial margin of the spring ligament. This you see right here is the spring ligament. So it is attached to the medial margin of the spring ligament. Secondly, there is a middle fibers or the tibiocalcaneal ligament which is attached to the whole end of the sustentaculum talli as you can see right here. The posterior fibers or the posterior tibiotala ligament are attached to the medial tubercle of the posterior process of the talus bone right here. Now looking at the deep part of the deltoid ligament or the anterior tibiotala ligament as you see right here, it is attached to the anterior part of the medial surface of the talus bone right here. The deltoid ligament as a whole is crossed by the tendons of the tibialis posterior and the flexor digitorum longus as you can see right here. The deltoid ligament is a very strong ligament and excessive tensile forces on the ligament result in avulsion fracture. Now looking at the main points under the deltoid or the medial ligament, this is a very strong triangular ligament present on the medial side of the ankle. The ligament is divided into a superficial and deep part. Both parts have a common attachment above to the apex and margins of the medial malleolus. Looking at the superficial part, the anterior fibers or tibionavicular are attached to the tuberosity of the navicular bone and to the medial margin of the spring ligament. The middle fibers or tibiocalcanean are attached to the whole end of the sustentaculum talli. The posterior fibers or the posterior tibiotala are attached to the medial tubercle of the posterior process of the talus. Looking at the deep part of the anterior tibiotala ligament, it is attached to the anterior part of the medial surface of the talus. The deltoid ligament as a whole is crossed by the tendons of the tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus muscle. The deltoid ligament is a very strong ligament and excessive tensile forces on the ligament result in avulsion fracture. Moving on to the lateral ligament, this ligament consists of three bands which are as follows. The anterior talofibular ligament as you can see right here is a flat band which passes from the anterior margin of the lateral malleolus to the neck of the talus. The posterior talofibular ligament as you can see right here passes from the lower part of the malleolar fossa of the fibula bone to the lateral tubercle of the talus. The calcaneofibular ligament is a long rounded cord which passes from the notch on the lower border of the lateral malleolus to the tubercle on the calcaneum. It is crossed by the tendons of the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Now looking at the main points under the lateral ligament, the ligament consists of three bands which are as follows. The anterior talofibular ligament is a flat band which passes from the anterior margin of the lateral malleolus to the neck of the talus. The posterior talofibular ligament 
passes from the lower part of the malleolar fossa of the fibula to the lateral tubercle of the talus. The calcaneofibular ligament is a long rounded cord which passes from the notch on the lower border of the lateral malleolus to the tubercle on calcaneum. It is crossed by the tendons of the peroneus longus and brevis. The introscious tibiofibular ligament, the inferior extensor retinaculum and inferior and superior perone peroneal retinacula also contribute to the stability of the ankle joint. Now let us look at the relations of the ankle joint. Anteriorly from medial to the lateral side there are the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, the anterior tibial vessels and the deep peroneal nerve which is not seen in this diagram, the extensor digitorum longus and the peroneus tertius. Postromedially from the medial to lateral side they are the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial vessels which is not seen in this diagram, the tibial nerve and the flexor hallucis longus. Finally, postrolaterally the relations are peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. Now, concising it into points we have anteriorly from medial to lateral side there are the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, the anterior tibial vessels, the deep peroneal nerve, the extensor digitorum longus and the peroneus tertius. Now, to remember this we can use a mnemonic T DEP T E A D E P T DEP Now postromedially from medial to lateral side there are the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial vessels, the tibial nerve, the flexor hallucis longus. And finally, postrolaterally, the relations are the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. Now, let us look at the movements at the ankle joint. The active movements at the ankle joint are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Now, in dorsiflexion, that is this movement, the forefoot is raised and the angle between the front of the leg and the dorsum of the foot is diminished as you can see right here. It is a close pack position with maximum congruence of the joint surfaces. The wider anterior trochlear surface of the talus fits into the lower end of the narrow posterior part of the lower end of the tibia as you can see right here. And there are no chances of dislocation in dorsiflexion. Moving on to plantar flexion of the ankle joint, the forefoot is depressed and the angle between the leg and the foot is increased. The narrow posterior part of the trochlear surface of the talus loosely fits into the wide anterior part of the lower end of the tibia. High heels cause plantar flexion of the ankle and its dislocations. Now concising the points under the movements of the ankle joint, the active movements are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. In dorsiflexion, the forefoot is raised and the angle between the front of the leg and the dorsum of the foot is diminished. It is a close pack position with maximum congregants of the joint surfaces. The wider anterior trochlear surface of the talus fits into the lower end of the narrow posterior part of the lower end of the tibia. There are no chances of dislocation in dorsiflexion. Now moving on to plantar flexion. In plantar flexion, the forefoot is depressed and the angle between the leg and the foot is increased. The narrow posterior part of the trochlear surface of the talus loosely fits into the wide anterior part of the lower end of the tibia and finally high heels cause plantar flexion of the ankle and its dislocations. Looking at the blood supply of the ankle joint, it is supplied from the anterior tibial, posterior tibial and peroneal arteries. Moving to the nerve supply, it is supplied from the deep peroneal and the tibial nerves. Looking at the muscles producing movements at the ankle joint, the dorsiflexion movement, the principal muscle involved in this dorsiflexion movement is the tibialis anterior muscle. The accessory muscles include the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus and the peroneus tertius. This is the tibialis anterior muscle. This is the extensor digitorum longus as you can see right here and this is the extensor hallucis longus. This is the tendon of 
fibularis tertius also called peroneus tertius right here. Now the plantar flexion movement is brought about mainly by the gastrocnemius and soleus. The accessory muscles for plantar flexion include the plantaris, tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus. This is a posterior view of the leg. This is a gastrocnemius muscle. And this is the soleus muscle. This is the tibialis posterior muscle. This is a flexor hallucis longus. And this is a flexor digitorum longus muscle. This is the plantaris muscle. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy of the ankle joint, sprains of the ankle are almost always abduction sprains of the subtalar joints. True sprains of the ankle are caused by forced plantar flexion. Dislocations of the ankle are rare. Acute sprains of the lateral ankle occur when foot is plantar flexed and excessively inverted. Acute sprains of medial ankle occur in excessive eversion. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.